back guys in today's episode we are making a jumbo meatloaf made with beef and pork and a whole bunch of ingredients this ain't your mother's meatloaf folks but I did I'm gonna try to make the video short I already assembled the meatloaf I already got it formed it's resting in the refrigerator we're gonna throw it on the Tahoma 900 what I did is I sauteed all the vegetables ahead of time Mixed all the ingredients in a bowl, throw it all in there and mixed it up. I formed it in a meatloaf, trying to keep this video short. Nothing more boring than watching some guy cut up a onion and a bell pepper and stuff. Anyway, I have the full ingredient list down in the show me more. Only thing I did optional is I added some cheese to mine. We're in Wisconsin, folks. Every dish gets a little bit of cheese. That's optional. You don't have to put it in. But if you do put cheese in yours, use extra sharp cheddar. It stands up to the high heat. It won't just melt and disappear all over the place. So remember, extra sharp cheddar if you put cheese in your meatloaf. Or you can just leave it out. Alright, let's get this to Homa 900 fired up, folks. I'll show you this epic meatloaf. Alright, guys. Before I bring you down and show you this magnificent beef, pork, beef and pork meatloaf. It smells amazing. Let's recap what we did. All right. I took all the ingredients off camera. I sauteed all the onions and bell peppers and threw it all in a bowl. Added all the ingredients. I'll have a full list of ingredients down below, folks. Mixed in the meat. Stirred it up really good. Formed it into a loaf. Brushed it with some sauce. Let it sit in the refrigerator for an hour. Went out and fired up to, to home 900. With uh, Royal Oak Lump Charcoal, which, by the way, turned out to be pretty good. Now, I'm not a big, like I said, I'm not a big Lump Charcoal fan. But okay, it worked out good. I didn't find nothing unusual in there. Pieces were perfect size. No insulation, no blocks of cement like I found in that, what was that, cowboy lump charcoal? Ooh, that's not bad. All right, let me bring you down. I'm tired. I've been working outside all day in the yard. Let's cut this meatloaf open and see how we did, folks. Mm -hmm. Alright folks, so here it is. One meatloaf. Let's cut this one right down the middle. My second meatloaf today, folks. I don't know which video you're going to see first, the turkey one or the beef one, but here it is. Look at that cheese in there. Oh yeah. Still a little warm. Even though I let it sit for a half hour. See right here, I don't know if you can see that. Let me bring you in a little closer. See that cheese? Now that's optional. You don't have to put it in. I use the extra sharp cheddar. See how you can still see it? If you use just regular cheddar or a mild cheddar, that would have just melted away and you would never known it was in there. If you're doing shotgun shells or something, use extra sharp cheddar. It'll hold up to the heat really good. All right, let me back you back up. Whoa. Okay, about the only thing left to do is taste it. Try and keep this video short and I can't keep my mouth shut. Got a nice little smoke ring on there, folks. Here we go, folks. Oh my. That is damn good. Hang on, folks. I'll bring you up. Alright, guys. Now that, tell you what, the Tahoma 900 might have a couple problems with the charcoal not snuffing out. That's not no big deal to me. But you sure get a good offset smoke flavor here, folks. I didn't add no wood to the ash pan. I just used that Royal Oak. And I am getting one healthy dose of smoke right here, folks. Good, clean smoke. Mmm. I added that chimney to it. <clears throat> Gives it more of an air draw. You had a couple of chunks of wood in the bottom there. You got yourself an offset smoker, folks. Alright. Let's try a piece of that cheese in it. Yeah, we got that extra sharp cheddar. <laughs> That's Wisconsin cheese flavor there, folks. Alright. 
If I can make good meatloaf, you can make a good meatloaf. Everything be down below in the show me section. Peace out. See you in the next one. Alright guys, got the Tahoma 900 fired up. I'm going to put that meatloaf on. I'm using, today it'll be the first time this guy's backyard barbecue. Well, I'm actually going to use some of this Royal Oak Natural Hardwood Lump Charcoal, folks. Now, I'm not a big lump charcoal fan. I've had a lot of bad experiences with it in my master built and my Weber kettle plugging up the vents and finding a bunch of rocks and cement insulation and I just stopped using it all together but the old local Walmart had that bag on sale at a price I couldn't resist so I figured what the heck I tried it's going down to the 900 poop all right well I got the 900 fired up the fan just kicked on my way of trying to keep these videos a little on the short side folks so you know, I don't bore you to death I skipped the chopping and dicing part and went right to the right to the making of it. Ah. <clears throat> We're gonna put that meatloaf in. That's a big bohemian meatloaf, folks. <clears throat> oh, how much thing weighs a ton? I'm thinking about taking it out of this tray and putting it right on the shelf. Might have a lot of juice that comes out of here. So. Let's see if I can get it up out of here. Oh, there we go. Ah. Now I want the juice to kind of run down here and out the front. Ah. Now if you don't want a big mess in your thing, put a tray under it or something. Daddy yeah, don't care about messies. Ah, we're on at 225. Royal Oak Charcoal, all right? I did some modifications to the old 900. I'll show you this thing. You may have noticed this. I'm putting a sliding rack in. I can pull it all out. And I also added a chimney extension. Right there. It turns this baby into an offset, folks. Trust me. It's about as close to an offset cooker you're going to get right here. This Tahoma 900. All right, we'll see you in one hour, folks. All right, guys. It's been exactly one hour. We're at 100 degrees. Looking good after one hour. Got a little cheese bubbling out of there. From Wisconsin, we got to put a little cheese in there. Okay, we'll check on one more hour. Running at 225. No hurry. See you in one hour, folks. All right, guys, it's been exactly two hours. I forgot to use the timer. Oh, well, I love that timer. It's starting to drain, dripping down. Going into a drip panging. Man, we're only at 130, folks. <clears throat> we got a little ways to go. Uh-oh. I marked it up. We're going to have to kick this heat up, folks. All right, let's see if I'm putting a little sauce on there. I'm just using this... Uh, Roswell's apple cinnamon barbecue sauce on meatloaf. I just happened to have it in the cupboard unopened. I figured might as well use it. Not doing me any good in the cupboard. See folks, this is where you need that pull out grate. I can't get in here to to mop this thing very good. That new pull out grate that Joe Victor is building me will be here in a few weeks. Once I get it and I put it in, I will give a shout out to Joe and I'll do a, a little video on it, how you can make one. Make make the rails and how you can go buy one from Joe. Joe made me the great, I made the rail. Woo, look at that, folks. Very windy today, folks. Nice day in western Wisconsin, northwest Wisconsin. Just pushing 70 degrees, folks. All right, we're going to shut this. Let's move this back a little bit. We'll get that to drain out. Now I'm going to kick the heat up to 275. We'll be back when it gets to 165. All right, folks. All right, guys. 
Let's check it out. Ooh, look at that. It's starting to look pretty good, folks. Let me bring you up a little bit. There you go. Let's check the internal. We're at 168 internal. Remember, you got raw pork in there. So, I mean, we put two pounds of pork in there. If it was all beef, you'd probably go 145, 150. But with the pork, we're taking it to 165 to be safe. I can't lock this temperature in, but it's giving me about a 160 in most areas. That's why I like my chef temp better. 155 on this end, 168. So I think we're pretty close. We're gonna take her in, bring it in, let it rest, folks. I'll see you inside the house on the cutting board for the old final taste test. All right, guys, before I bring you down, and show you this magnificent beef pork, beef and pork meatloaf. It smells amazing. Let's recap what we did. All right, I took all the ingredients off camera. I sauteed all the onions and bell peppers and threw it all in a bowl. Added all the ingredients. I'll have a full list of ingredients down below, folks. Mixed in the meat, stirred up really good, formed it into a loaf, brushed it with some sauce, let it sit in the refrigerator for an hour, went out and fired up to, to home in 900 with uh, Royal Oak Lump Charcoal, which by the way, turned out to be pretty good. I'm not a big, like I said, I'm not a big Lump Charcoal fan, but okay, it worked out good. I didn't find nothing unusual in there. Pieces were perfect size, no insulation, no blocks of cement like I found in that, what was that, Cowboy Lump Charcoal? Ooh, that's not bad. All right, let me bring you down. I'm tired, I've been working outside all day in the yard. Let's cut this meatloaf open and see how we did, folks. All right, folks. So here it is, one meatloaf. Let's cut this one right down the middle. My second meatloaf today, folks. I don't know which video you want to see first, the turkey one or the beef one, but here it is. Look at that cheese in there. Oh yeah, still a little warm. Even though I let it sit for a half hour. See right here, I don't know if you can see that. Let me bring in that cheese. Now that's optional, you don't have to put it in. I used the extra sharp cheddar. See how you can still see it? If you use just regular cheddar or a mild cheddar, that would have just melted away and you would never have known it was in there. If you're doing shotgun shells or something, use extra sharp cheddar. It'll hold up to the heat really good. All right, let me back you back up. Okay, about the only thing left to do is taste it. Try and keep this video short and I can't keep my mouth shut. Got a nice little smoke ring on there, folks. Here we go, folks. Oh my, that is damn good. Hang on, folks, I'll bring you up. Okay. Now that, tell you what, the Tahoma 900 might have a couple problems with the charcoal not snuffing out. That's not no big deal to me. But you sure get a good offset smoke flavor here, folks. I didn't add no wood to the ash pan. I just used that Royal Oak. And I am getting one healthy dose of smoke right here, folks. Good, clean smoke. Mmm. I added that chimney to it. <clears throat> Gives it more of an air draw. You had a couple of chunks of wood in the bottom there. You got yourself an offset smoker, folks. Alright. Let's try a piece of that cheese in it. Got that extra sharp cheddar. <laughs> That's Wisconsin cheese flavor there, folks. Alright. If I can make good meatloaf, you can make a good meatloaf. Everything be down below in the show me section. Peace out. See you in the next one.